Borchers has been trimming trash and decorating discards forever. Perhaps you know her as Eco Heidi. Today she's sharing one of my absolutely favorite vintage Aline's technique. It's bread dough roses. I'm delighted to welcome my sister, Heidi Borchers. Hi, Heidi. Hi, everyone. Um, this is not only our favorite technique, but it's also Mama Aline's favorite technique. She still has some of the designs that we made years ago in her home because she absolutely loves the little roses. And I'm going to show you some of the, this is the little roses. The little roses there are made out of a slice of the glue and a little bit of paint, or a slice of bread, the paint, and the glue. And I'm going to show you how to make those today. And, you know, I'm also thinking that you can use these for a lot of things. You can use them in jewelry. I'll show you in just a little bit the jewelry. Um, you can use them on any of your mixed media. You can make them tiny, tiny. You can make them big. I suggest that you start out by making them um, a little bit larger to get the idea of them, but I make them kind of tiny. So let's go to the work table here. And there we go. Now I have a slice of light bread here. I'm going to take off the crust, and if anybody looked at my blog, you could follow along as you did it, if you, have, if you brought all the supplies. I thought that'd be kind of cool to for have you follow along. Okay, you're not going to use these, throw them away. And I use either, you can use either a plastic cup to mix it in, or a um, baggie, but you're still going to have to get your hands into it once you get all the, the ingredients into it. It's just it doesn't stay messy for very long. Okay, I just kind of shred it in little pieces. Little pieces. You know, today I have a couple of designer secrets, too. It's kind of funny that my sisters always say, when, I, when they watch me demo, they say, well, you didn't say that in your instructions, because there are some designer secrets that I don't realize until I'm actually doing it. Okay, bread is in the, the plastic bag. I use a, a cold cream, and like this one's from a just a... Um, a local um, drugstore. You can use like Pond's cold cream. You can tell that my cold cream is used for my crafts. First of all, I put some on my hands. And uh, here's one of the designer secrets. When I measure my glue, I put some in the tablespoon. And today I'm using, I, I kind of played with a couple of these um, newer tacky glues today, the uh, fast grab and the quick dry. And I, I use, I have a green one today and I have a pink one today that I'm using. And I liked them both, but I, I think as we go along, I think it was the, this, the pink is going to be the, the quick dry. That's the first one that I'm doing. Okay, you're going to measure a tablespoon of the glue. We have one slice of bread to one tablespoon. Uh, tablespoon. And make sure you do an accurate, make it exactly a tablespoon. Put it in the bag, and I kind of scoop it in there, and it comes off pretty easily. And then you're going to put some paint, and I use any acrylic paint, but again, you know, test with what you have. And we're going to seal it up, and we're going to just kind of smush it a little bit. It's got too much air in it. My screen's off to the side, so I have to keep looking to see if I'm showing it to you right. You keep just mix it, mix it, mix it. Get it all mixed before you reach your hand in there. Now this is why you're going to put your put that um, cold cream on your hands because you want to make sure. Like my hands are really dry today. I was doing something yesterday. Oh, I was painting. See in the patio. Okay, get all this off, and then you just start, and see how messy it is, but it'll come off, I promise. Just m keep mixing it around. See how it's mix, mix, mix. And then just keep kneading it. Get it off your fingers. Mix. Now, there's one thing I notice about when you make bread dough, like this. After you work with it like this, it seems to like activate the, the yeast again. So what I do when I'm all done with it, I put it in a plastic bag 
and I let it set for a little bit. It's kind of like setting it up. See how it's starting to form a clay? Whoops. Whoa. <laughs> and just keep mixing it. Mix, mix, mix. And it's starting to, it's, it's a really nice smooth clay. It's almost even like a polymer clay. And it, you can see how you can get it all off your hands. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into a plastic bag. Because this is an air dry clay, you want to make sure you keep it in a, in a plastic bag. Now, I have a wipey to get the rest of this off. And I have some that I made earlier. Like I said, oops, it kind of needs to be, see how it's nice and soft. So what you're going to do is you're going to just take to make your roses. I still got some glue on here. Let me get this off for a second. Take, and we, we always kind of teach it by, by taking a size like the size of a garden pea. And you have to be consistent because that's how what makes your flowers consistent. Okay, so you're going to take this, the size of a garden pea and you're just going to squish it between your fingers. I got kind of a bigger one today. It's a pretty good sized garden pea, but for a demonstration it's probably good. Okay, then you're just on the first one, this is going to be the center. You're just going to roll it, and it's like paper thin, and I kind of push back my center there, and there you have the center of your flower. Okay, next one again, remember I said you're going to use the about the same size. You're going to squeeze it again between your fingers. And you're going to put this one right next to that one. Now, you don't want to put this petal down too far. Let me see if I can show that. Because if you go down too far, it starts looking like a pine cone. So make sure you keep all your petals even across the top. And then again, kind of roll back your, whoops, roll back your edges. And there's petal number two. So what I usually do is I usually do the center. I do two around the, so this is my second one. Whoops. Put it up there again. Keep it even across the top. And there's petal number two. Now, you c at any point, you can stop making the, um, the rose. This is a nice size rose. And oftentimes, too, what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just clip it, the back of it off, and be sure you put that back into the bag because you can use it. Another thing I do a lot of times is I put, I'll put a toothpick on it like so. Okay, now I want to, hopefully I still have a, just a few more minutes, I want to show you really quickly how to do a leaf. Leaves are taking the green and make it in into like a little teardrop. I flatten it. And then I use a piece of shrink plastic. This is the opaque plastic because I like the way it turns. And I put, I just put the edge of it into the, to the dough. I kind of mark it like so, but here's one of the secrets. You go back and push it, push that line in, and then I kind of put a little cut there and pinch it together, and you have a leaf. So we have a rose, and we have a leaf. Isn't that cool? Now, if you if you don't want to color them, you can also do it afterwards. Like these right here on my necklace were colored afterwards. I actually painted the acrylic paint afterwards. It makes them look more like they're maybe a ceramic instead of like porcelain. So that's what you can do. See how beautiful those are, the copper ones? I just painted them with a copper metallic um, acrylic paint.